Welcome to Edgecast, the series where we show you tips, tricks, and best practices when using Solid Edge. Today, we'll be revisiting profile sketching. 2D sketch profiles are used in part, sheet metal, assembly, and draft environments, and they're the basis for all 3D geometry, because you'll usually need at least one profile in 2D before you can generate any 3D geometry. While many of those watching are probably able to use the draw, relate, and dimensioning commands, this episode's meant as a quick run-through of best practices when sketching. With that in mind, we'll be going through best practices in terms of initial geometry creation, how to use IntelliSketch and relationships effectively, and then some of the lesser used sketch commands which may be useful to you. So to start off, what are the advised best practices when creating a sketch in Solid Edge? First things first, you need to know where you're sketching before you start. If you're in synchronous mode, that means we advise locking onto a plane by moving your mouse over it and pressing F3. In ordered mode, it means be careful when specifying a plane to sketch on. It may be useful to create a plane and then sketch, instead of creating a sketch plane in the sketch command. It means that you don't lose your plane as well as your sketch if you accidentally cancel the command. Next. I advise sketching simply. Ask yourself, should I make a single complicated sketch and a single complicated feature if I can make many simple features with many sketches? Incorrectly edited sketches are the number one reason why CAD models fail. So as a rule, I advise having many simple sketches. Then apply relationships where possible to constrain your geometry. I like to sketch with the base coordinate system as my central reference point, unless I have a good reason not to, as it's something to which we can apply sketch relationships, such as connect or horizontal and vertical constraints. Finally, we advise adding a few dimensions, but not too many, in order to fully constrain the sketch. Keying in values with a first line is a good idea to give you a sense of the model's scale, and sometimes you have to dimension lines as you place them but if we're obeying the simple sketch rule, dimensions should be one of the last things to place. Sketch relationships can be thought of as small connectors between your sketch lines, which restrict the movement of the lines, and are placed with the commands in the relate section of the sketching environment. Relationships will appear as small red icons on a sketch profile, which can be selected and deleted, and the main ones you'll see are as follows. Connect, which moves one sketch point to another sketch point. Horizontal and vertical, which can be used either on a single line to force it to its nearest horizontal or vertical orientation, or on two key points to make them horizontal or vertical to each other. Tangent, which can move a curved line to connect exactly onto a straight or curved line in a tangential manner. Parallel, which will make two straight lines parallel to each other. Equal, which makes two elements equal length, radius, or diameter. Symmetric, which requires a mirror line to be defined as the first step, but then forces a 2D mirror relationship. Concentric, which makes two circles or arcs concentric to each other. Perpendicular, which forces two lines into a 90 degree alignment, collinear, which moves one line to be in line with another line, lock, which will prevent any movement of the selected sketch element, and rigid set, which causes any dragged sketch elements to move around as one with the rest of their rigid set. For most of these commands, the workflow to apply them is select the line you want to move, then the line or point you want to move it to. If no other constraints are in place, the first line or sketch element will move to the second one. IntelliSketch is something that works away in the background while you're sketching. In brief, it applies sketch relationships without the user having to manually specify them, which saves time. For example, a rectangle would logically be placed with its corners connected and made up of vertical and horizontal lines. That logic is all driven by IntelliSketch which looks for and places all the relationship types checked on in the IntelliSketch section of the sketching command bar. Unticking all of these boxes will prevent the relevant relationships from being auto-generated. If you see a sketch line snapping to a particular orientation while you're creating it, that's IntelliSketch at work. 
You can override it temporarily by holding down Alt if it's interfering with your sketching. And if you go into Advanced IntelliSketch options, this is where you can enable continuous auto-dimensioning. I keep that option off personally, but I understand some users like automatically placed dimensions. Dimensions themselves are fairly straightforward. When placed on a sketch, they provide a sense of scale and distance between elements or key points. If the dimension orientation with Smart Dimension is wrong, then it's possible to hold down Shift and reorient the preview of the dimension. And if a dimension taken along a different axis is required, you can use Dimension by Two Points, or alternatively, change the dimension mode from Automatic to Dimension Axis, which will allow a new reference axis to be defined. If you need to place angular dimensions, you can either choose the angular dimension command, or start the smart dimension command, select two lines, and press A. I advise keeping relationship colours on while sketching. This colour codes your lines, and indicates when they're fully constrained, black, or able to move around when you drag them, which are blue. After placing relationships and dimensions, it might be that your sketch is still not fully constrained for some reason. If that's the case, Relationship Assistant can be used to either auto-constrain the sketch lines, or show how the sketch will vary its definition. For example, it's not immediately clear why this sketch isn't fully constrained. It seems to have all the correct dimensions. But if I start Relationship Assistant, select Sketch Lines and Show Variability, I can see why everything can be moved. The reason is, the entire sketch can move around. So connecting it to the base coordinate system solves the problem. If the Relationship Assistant button is greyed out, it means two things. You're in synchronous mode, and you're not locked onto a sketch plane. Also bear in mind that if a sketch line can't be moved for some reason, there are only two causes, a dimension or a constraint. And if it's not one, it must be the other. So here's a quick demonstration for you. If I were to create a rectangle with no IntelliSketch options active, it would be no more than four lines that happen to be in the correct orientation. I'd be able to click and drag each element around on its own. However, I can reconnect all of these lines and repair my sketch with either connect commands or the trim corner command. And finally, I'll make the rectangle central about my base coordinate system. And add some dimensions. Sometimes the normal sketch commands won't allow you to create the correct geometry. For example, if you want to position a whole circle by angle and distance from a certain point, instead of simple dimensions from key points or edges, you'll need a straight line to define that distance and angle. However, normal lines might interfere with regions and profiles needed to create 3D geometry, so construction geometry lines are the best way to define such hole positions. As of ST9, you can either toggle construction, which means creating lines and then turning them into dotted construction geometry, or create as construction which makes all subsequently created sketch lines construction geometry until the user deactivates this mode again. The project to sketch command, or as it was previously known, the include command, has two main uses, one of which is creating sketch profiles when you're editing into a part from an assembly. This command can be used to borrow lines, chains, and entire profiles from other parts. And if the option maintain associativity is checked on while doing this. It's greyed out here because these options are from the normal part environment, not in-place editing. You can introduce assembly linking between parts, so that if one part changes, the second updates its sketches accordingly. The second use would be to simply copy one sketch from one plane to another in a part environment. Tear off sketch is similar to project to sketch, in that it can be used to project sketch elements between planes. But instead, it works almost like an advanced copy-paste command, and may be useful for creating lofts that have a constant cross-section along their length. 
In my example here, I've created two angled planes and a profile sketch for a loft feature on the first one. As there's a sketch in the model, tear off sketch is available. Bear in mind also that this is only available in the ordered environment. I'll select it, specify a plane, and then choose the sketch elements to place onto the new plane. Curves can be quite useful in some part commands, and are critical when using complex surfaces. If you only need a few of them, say as guide paths for a loft, it's possible to quickly create keypoint curves in place of 3D sketches, or more complicated curves, which might be tricky to place. They can be placed by simply clicking 3D keypoints. As the software extrapolates a single curve between the points, the user clicked. If needs be, a keypoint curve can be created to generate a sweep path. Then plain normal to curve can be used for your sweep profiles. One useful piece of information you may want to know is that sweeps can use a mixture of 2D sketches, 3D sketches, and curves as valid paths. I'll probably need some guide curves for this loft I want to create, so let's add two. One at each of these corners. Then create additional key points, which can be moved around in 3D space later. And now I'll instruct my loft surfaces to follow these curves, generating a much more organic shape. Here are some sketch commands you might not already know, starting with the cousin of the trim corner command, the extend to next. This can be found under the drop down menu from the split command, and very simply extrapolates one line until it intersects another line. If you use this on a curve element, it creates a tangent straight line from the end you specify until it meets another line. It also auto generates a connect constraint where it meets this line. So if I have a sketch element I need to extend simply, and I don't want to play around with sketch relationships, I can use this command to achieve a closed intersection between the sketch lines, just like this. Split is also a less used command. If you have a sketch element that needs turning into multiple elements, you can do it with this command. The only requirement is the presence of split points on the line, which can be midpoints, silhouette points, intersection points with other sketch lines, or wherever you place your mouse, although this isn't best practice. Adding construction geometry might be useful to specify split locations for this command. In my example here, I'm going to split a circle with four end-connected segments. First, I'll add two construction lines, which will give me the required intersection points. Then clicking on these points with my split command active will break the circle into four equal segments without moving the new lines from their original position. The mirror command is a useful time-saving command when creating a complex symmetric sketch, allowing you to halve your sketching workload. There are two modes of operation, either to select an existing line to act as your 2D mirror, or to use two points to generate a temporary mirror line. Here, I have one half of a sketch that I don't really want to replicate manually. So I'll select Mirror, and I also want to generate a symmetric relationship between sketch elements when I mirror them. So we'll need to select an existing line. This one here will do. And when I place the mirror, my sketch elements are automatically created with symmetric relationships applied. Moving one of them will move its partner. Sometimes you may want to create a sketch that's like that one, but bigger. This is very useful when working with imported geometry, which might have been drawn at the wrong scale. You have two options on the drop-down menu from the mirror command, either to use a uniform scale up or scale down command, with scale, or to move sketch lines from one point to another while maintaining their connections to the other lines, and relaxing any dimensions. With this rectangular sketch, I think I'll scale it up by a factor of two about the centre. There we go. And now I want to stretch it sideways. 
Bear in mind that this doesn't turn circular elements into ellipses, it just moves lines that would otherwise be fully constrained. Sometimes sketches end up with overlapping elements for some reason, or small elements, random points, or unwanted curves, particularly when importing third-party sketches, or results from a scanner. If you want to verify that your sketch has none of these, the clean sketch command can be used to search for them, and either remove them, or move them to an existing layer of your choosing to review later. In my example here, there are overlapping sketch lines that I can't see, and some points floating around being a nuisance. I'll uh, prove that they are there by floating over one of these lines, and there we go. Quick pick indicates that there are two elements here, overlapping. I think I'll just delete all of them for now with clean sketch. And just to prove it worked, there's only one line here. Fill is a command which is probably more useful in the draft environment than the part, as it's used to highlight closed regions with colour. If used in an ordered part or assembly sketch, you'll lose sight of these filled regions after returning to the 3D environment, hence why it's probably more useful in the draft environment. Here's an example. I want to highlight this particular sketch section in red to highlight it for the manufacturing team. I'll choose a colour and fill style, and click on the region. If needed, you can select the filled region and edit its colour after placement, or delete it entirely. The last command I want to cover is the convert to curve command. In the event you need to dynamically drag lines into more organic shapes, this will convert a line or arc, which are classed as analytic sketch elements, into a B-spline curve, which can have additional edit points added and moved around, to make a less rigid sketch. When combined with the dynamic edit command in ordered mode, this is a very powerful tool that allows previously linear profiles to become more ergonomic by clicking and dragging key points, while maintaining vision of your 3D geometry. In this example here, my rectangular sketch needs to have its top face changed into a curved surface. I'll edit its profile, convert the top line to a curve, and there we go. I can now drag curve key points and edit handles around to change my part's shape. So as a summary, we've covered sketching best practices and how to use IntelliSketch, how to create your own sketch relationships and dimensions in 2D, introduced you to 3D curves with key point curve, the very simplest curve function, and finally, we've shown you some of the less used sketch commands, which in the right situation, might mean the difference between keeping your existing geometry and having to completely remake your sketches. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any more questions, topics you'd like to cover, or any other feedback, please either leave a comment below, or send your requests to us by email at support at cuttingedge.co.uk. And be sure to tune in to watch the next episode of Edgecast.